This is 2004, a podcast hosted by two guys who were alive in 2004, but weren't burned that year. 2004, podcast I've seen, hosted by Jeff Andrew and Bobby DeVore. Thursday? Yeah. La- oh, last Thursday, okay. I, I was confused about it's the day. future. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> it's in the future. Was. It's a future was. It's a future was? Yeah. It's like it's going to be. Oh. You're talking towards the next year. Okay, I get you now. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be Thursday. I don't know. Oh, it's going to be like on a Friday, most likely. Yeah. Next year's not a leap year, right? <laughs> I don't keep up with the years. <laughs> Are leap years on election years? It can happen. I don't know. I mean, has it, it ever happened. happened? Look it up. Oh, it, it most definitely it has happened. But like, uh, shit. No, uh, go to make another one. <laughs> right, dude, fuck! I clicked the button preemptively. All right, shit. Um, leap year election. Leap year Williams election. Huh? Leap year Williams? You don't know that. No. Red, Dirty Rock character? I mean, Dirty Rock episode? No. Oh, it's hilarious. You ever seen that one? The one with the fake Jim Carrey movie in it? Not off the top of my head. First presidential election in the 18th century was held on a leap year. Did it wait. say the next year is going to be the. F- wait, hold up. Another one? Year. Hey, just stop reading things to yourself. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to answer your question. Yeah, no, no, yeah. It also just said that on the other reference. It did? Yeah. Where? At the very beginning. Next year's leap year. Uh, well, I mean, this was written in uh, 2016. This was posted three years ago. I didn't know, or I didn't know the date of it. This was posted in 2015, technically. No. Oh. So, never trust the date on forum posts like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh... All right, yeah, but uh, we're uh, we're here. Uh, it was my birthday Thursday. Yeah. Went shopping, got myself two shirts, treated myself. That's good. Got some candy. <laughs> That's good. Got got a new pair of slacks. Really? I've been wearing the same two pairs of pants for the last couple of years. Really? And one of them is not even fitting me anymore because I've lost so much weight. Shit. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Did you get slacks? Yeah. Why slacks? I don't want jeans. Okay. Wait, wait. When you're saying slacks, are you talking about chinos? No. Really? You got full-on slacks? No, trousers. Whatever. I don't know what they're called. Oh, okay. Just not. Right. You got, like, dress pants? Like, suit pants? No. Okay. I like them, though. I haven't like- worn them yet. I'm going to wear them. I'm going to wear both. I'm going to wear the shirts when it's hotter out. Oh, okay. Today, it's, you know, it's kind of warm. Yeah. Like you said on the phone earlier, just kind of spring warm yeah it's like 60 some odd degrees out it's like and again they're tropical shirts oh yeah they're the colorful type of shirts yeah. i like to wear how how tropical are we talking are we talking like still kind of cool looking or like are we talking full-on irony i don't do irony shirts oh you don't do irony shirts i'm not doing that is that because you can't iron or are you like confused about what i'm talking about it was a barely work pun yeah no. also i no. Also, this man knows how to iron. It just takes him, like, three hours. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, dude, it took you a long time to iron that fucking shirt. Man. I am not... I am <coughs> not, uh... Adequate. I don't I don't wear shirts for the joke. Oh, okay. I do, sometimes. Yeah. The unfunny people do it. I do it. I mean, like, <laughs> I do it, but it, like... It's kind of, like, post-irony, because it's, like, after so it's long... It's post-comedy? Which means it's not funny. No, <laughs> post irony. Uh, like he wears in the net shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I wear uh, sh- shirts that are super funny because they have a message, and that's the bit. Oh my god! That's the shirts bit. Uh, I uh, all my shirts just have really depressing facts on them, but it's funny because it's on a t-shirt. America's foreign policy is imperialist. <laughs> that's the shirt. <laughs> It's a shirt that just says Israel's in a par fight today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
This is thesis. It's not. But it's the shirt. And other it. things that are true for the left, for the left, like uh, it's not, it's not anti-Semitic to hate the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It is anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally the definition of anti-Semitic. I mean, fuck, like, the Israeli politicians that are supporting the whole... Uh, and Yahoo. Uh, what, oppression on Palestine? Yeah. The murder of... Just the murder, really. Yeah, literally. The murder of not only Palestinians, but Palestine. And pals of mine. Yeah. Uh. Uh, I also got a new hat. Yeah. That same night. Oh, the same night? Yeah, from a uh, band performed at the. Uh, sorry. At this bar in Louisville called yeah. Kaiju. Called Package. Package? What yeah, kind of. Cool band, kind of funky, kind of uh. jam bandy at times. Tight. Yeah. They got a, a hat that says, um, the kids are watching. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, can I see that? I just want to look at the snap on the back. Thank you. Ah, cool. That's, like, pretty good quality. It has a nice little brass, uh, yeah. thingy. Brass. No, no, no cheap, uh, brass plastic. Brass dangy. My dangy wangy. That's what I call my penis. The... It's also made of brass. Found <laughs> a fun. Nope. Oh, that kind of worked. Uh, <laughs> That's my penis. Like you know what's great about having a brass penis? <laughs> what's great about having a brass penis is that you're not magnetic. So you can go places. Oh my god. Like, if you're going to get a penis extension, brass or like aluminum or like some pretty good metals. Brass. You said, br- you said brass weird. <laughs> brass? Brass. <laughs> oh, do I? I do kind of say brass weird. Like, I. I I think the like vocal fry that I always do kind of elongates the R in brass. Yeah, this is it why it sounds I, like I'm saying brass. I want Bernie to campaign on getting rid of of uh, vocal fry. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Then what are like hot girls that smoke gonna like talk? <laughs> exactly. How are they gonna do like sexy voices? I don't know. What the fuck is Lindsay Lohan gonna do? Oh, God. Well, her career's already over, so... Yeah. Well, d- isn't she, like, doing something right now? I think she has, like, an island or something. Like, she's running a bar in an island or something. She oh, has okay. She's on E. Oh, okay. Or whatever. Good for her. Good for and her. she's stealing people's kids. <laughs> really? In- on the island? <laughs> <laughs> she's just taking these kids the to the island? The show's because of that. Really? <laughs> no. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. But, yo, about the kids. She comes real? in... She comes in the dark of night, like a fairy tale monster and just takes people's kids she dresses in all she takes black. naughty kids on christmas <laughs> Lindsay lohan is krampus <laughs> she wears like all black and like wears this mask and when she like gets the kids she's like justice <laughs> that's her voice yeah i couldn't I, it wasn't that great but you got the joke is there there's no like Lindsay lohan like phrases i can think of not really no no I mean, oh, uh, what's the uh, date in October? Oh, it's October 23rd. What? It's October 23rd. And that's what? Isn't that the the day from Mean Girls? Uh, when dude asks her what day it is? I don't know. <laughs> or whatever? I, I've seen Mean Girls a hundred times, I just never paid attention to that line. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. It, it used to be a thing on Tumblr. It's mostly the jokes that I paid attention to. Yeah, but like... I don't know, there's something... I think that is supposed to be a joke, it just didn't make me laugh ever, so I don't care. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mean Mean Girls was really good, like... It is a really good... It's it's, a really good... That joke just did work for me. Yeah, I get you. Uh, It's interesting to me how popular Mean Girls is. I... It was at one point my favorite movie, so... Yeah, I mean, like... uh, Oh my god, Danny DeVito, I love your work. (laughs) When the girl says you should be in the girls' room. Uh, She doesn't go here, has... Uh, Gina George, has Gina George ever made you feel less than? Yeah. Raise your hand. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's another one? On Wednesday, we she were... made out with a hot dog or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> you will get AIDS if you have sex without a rubber. You will get AIDS, AIDS. and die. <laughs> yeah, that's literally. Everyone take a rubber or something. <laughs> Public school. Or uh, the, the scene where they catch the principal making out with that teenage, <laughs> that teenage Asian girl. <laughs> 
Not the principal, but the uh, gym teacher. Uh. <laughs> well, everything's going crazy yeah. in school, and for some reason it makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, it was just the... Uh, like, because I Or uh, when they get to Regina George's house and they see her sister dancing to, like, a provocative... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Christina Aguilera. Is it Christina? Video. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and, oh, just all of Amy Poehler's shit. Oh, yeah, yeah so her funny. whole Her whole character was great. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> like, I didn't see it when it came out. And, like, you know where I actually saw Mean Girls? Probably for the first time. What? Fucking YMCA day camp. Where we said prayers every day. Wow. Yeah. It's not on TV. That's really, that's, yeah. All the time I've seen it on TV. Well. And on Netflix. So. Oh. Like, I, uh, we watched Mean Girls in my high school health class, actually. Did, did they think that one scene where it's like, <laughs> everyone grab a rubber was like all he needed to do? No, no, no. Because no. I didn't have a meathead for a health teacher. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was a, uh, we were talking about like bullying and stuff. Mm-hmm. Bullying, like that uh, sort of bullying's like the main theme of the movie. It's all, it's based on a book about bullying, so yeah. I didn't know it was based on a it book. Was, yeah, okay. It's called Queen Bee. Oh, uh, that's why. It's a different name. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um But Tina Fey wrote it, right? Yeah. And she didn't write the book, but she wrote the movie. Screenplay. Yeah. And did she direct it? I don't know. Let me see. Let me figure that out. Um and uh What's that dude? What's uh, the principal's name? Uh, fuck. Fuck. Yeah, he was ladies' man. Yeah, he's, he's on SNL well. for a long time. I always, I get him and David Allen Greer confused, mainly because they were popular around the same time in the 90s. And they were both on popular sketch shows. Yeah. Black dudes are on popular sketch yeah. shows at the same time. Wait, what was uh, David Allen Greer on? In Love and Color. Okay. How do you not remember that? That's what I was, well. Here's the thing. I was thinking about that, but it's like it doesn't really make any difference if he's like a black dude on, like on Living Color. Yeah. Because the majority of the cast was black. Yeah, but like that was a show that made him popular. Oh, okay. Uh, Tim Meadows. Oh, Tim Meadows. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait! You're telling me Chocolate News didn't put David Allen Greer on the map? <laughs> yeah, very late in the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that show that only lasted maybe one season <laughs> before it got canceled? Totally watched that as a kid, though. Same. <laughs> it's amazing, like, how, like, it's interesting to me that, like, white kids can be so involved in black culture and yet so racist at the same time. No, it's not that, it's not that, <laughs> when you look, when you're a black dude, <laughs> it's not that weird. Really? No. What do you mean, like, when you're a black dude, it's not that weird? It, it was like, observed. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you're around that shit all the time. Just like, well, I guess because, like, black comedy had always been, like, such a major force. Yeah. Um. But when they don't, in the, when you don't actually know black people, it doesn't matter how, how much content by black people you make. If you don't yeah. know black people, then you won't know shit. Yeah. And you're, and you're, and like, boys in America? Yeah. And boys in general have generally an underdeveloped sense of empathy. So it's yeah, very easy pretty much. for them. And well, and women can be that way too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But more so, especially white people. Special yeah. white people of all stripes, no matter the gender, can yeah. lack empathy for other races very easily. So. Oh yeah, no. When you're on top, you don't think yeah. about the bottom. No, not that. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're not gonna get semantic in my white guilt. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's about that's seriously what you're about to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop I'm not. No, stop, Bobby. Stop sweating so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, when I get nervous, I'm gonna get canceled. Oh. <laughs> what I hate about getting nervous around black people is when I get nervous, I say the N word. <laughs> <laughs> that's my nervous tick. Yeah. <laughs> Not even just in general. That's a highly problematic skit we should write. <laughs> <laughs> can you say the N word for me, or can we put and you we, in white? My voice comes in. It's like you say. It's like oh, uh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Nick, <laughs> <laughs> why do you sound like uh, Timmy from South Park? Yeah. <laughs> it's Timmy. Soft A. It's just Timmy. What? You said Timby. I said Timmy. You said Timby. I did not say Timmy. You said Timmy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do not go back on the... Do not pop okay, the show for this. All right, all right, all right. We can check after. Okay. About 13 minutes in. 
All right. Uh, tally. Or, uh, um. 13 parsecs in. Uh, What's a parsec? Uh, some made up uh, Star Trek, Star Wars shit. No, nah, dude, parsec is an actual measurement. No. That's a, the, I learned about that in astronomy. You actually. also just asked me, so. Yeah, I know, but like, a parsec is an actual thing. Unit of length used to measure law or distances. Okay. Oh, isn't a part, yeah, like a parsec is like one astronomical unit, which is like this arbitrary thing, I think. I don't know. Astronomy is hard, dog. Lizzie Kaplan looks so. Who's Look Lizzie? at Lizzie Kaplan and Mean Girls. She was the goth girl. Oh. Uh, yeah. Just look her up in Mean Girls. Put Mean Girls next to her. Because I did. I took me forever to recognize her as the girl from Mean Girls. Really? Yeah, I did not recognize her. Oh, years. dude, no, that's always who she's been to me. Even when she was in a uh, what sexology. I've seen, I've seen her in a bunch of other stuff and. The um, Sex Doctor or whatever. Uh, Masters of Sex. Masters of Sex. The Sex Doctor. <laughs> I mean, it is essentially about the Sex Doctor. Yeah, wasn't that his nickname? Oh. Uh, it's All right. Kenzie Kim. Scale. Blah blah. blah. Uh, it's interesting, like, because she still looks like. I mean, yes. kind of the punky goth girl. It is her face. Yeah. She can't really do anything bad. But like, she looks punky goth, like on her own. You know what I'm saying? Like, even in this photo where she's wearing this, like, weird bird flowery dress shit. I don't shape. know if she's intentionally looks that way. It's just how she looks. And that we've just come to associate that with her? Yeah. Well, you know, I kind of get this weird, like, uh... It, I mean, I associate her as a, com- as a comedy actress most of the time. Yeah. Because I see her in a lot of comedy That's stuff. normally what she's doing. Um, she does drama. Masters of Sex was a drama, but... Yeah, but she... I what she's known for, really, yeah. yeah just, um, she kind of, and maybe this is just like some weird shit that affects like thirty-year-old hipsters, but like she kind of has like that type of bone structure, like Saint Vincent, that lets you know she's a little like weird. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? Like, like look at her face. You know what I'm saying? Like she's just something about the way her face looks, her facial structure. She's got like very I guess it's like just like that weird um, skinny white woman face uh, yeah and it like cause this picture where she's wearing this like collared doily doily of a shirt uh gives me you know 30 year old hipster vibes it's giving me life that's what the, it is giving me life it's giving me life yeah yes. Yas Queen. <laughs> Slay. Me. Skinny Legend. Is that Brenda's song? No, that's not Brenda's song. Racist. <laughs> hey, when it was blurred. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Racist. Tell me that kind of doesn't. Oh my god, racist. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. She kind of. You know, shit. Racist. <laughs> uh, that looks like a fan made burn book, though. It. Could possibly is. I don't know if it's the uh, the actual original prop. Could be just uh-huh. like fan made. Uh, I thought um maybe I need to get into the musical. I don't know. Oh yeah, no, I'd be interested in seeing that actually. Who is the other lady from Mean Girls that uh the what's her name Amanda Seyfried? Yeah, she uh. I can feel the weather with my boobs. <laughs> It's gonna rain. <laughs> um, is that the line? Yeah. Oh, great. I'm glad I remember that. <laughs> I, uh, it took me a long That's time to... That's your cousin. So what? <laughs> it took me a long time not to see her as that girl from Mean Girls. The same. dumb girl from Mean For Girls. Real, same. Like, anything, like, you just yeah, expected I, her to be kind of dumb there's and everything. so many, she, many, she's a serious actress. Yeah, see her yeah. serious shit all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. But for some reason, I think it was the dumb blonde. Yeah, dude. The mean girls. And it's, it's interesting. Your it's, first... it's a mixture of her voice as yes, well. Yes, yeah. And, and the way she her looks. Her big blue eyes and Yeah, stuff. the Aryan-ness. She looks like every girl that really didn't deserve the, like, A-B honor roll that she got in high school in the popular group. What? You know what I'm talking about? 
Can you have one of those? Did you not pay attention to them? But they didn't deserve to be in it? They were kind of, they were a little too dumb in real life, but they were just really good nah, at homework. I didn't something. pay attention. To oh, okay. You didn't have to think about your position in the hierarchy of the... I didn't give a shit. Yeah, I... I uh, didn't give a shit. Well, one of the reasons, like, I have that... Um, also, listen, this is how little I gave a shit about high school. I realized that I don't give that many shits as, as all my... As a bunch of people from high school that I went to high school with do. Yeah. The fact that I don't remember any teachers' names. Most of the people I hung out with, I've forgotten their names. <laughs> <laughs> it's just true. Yeah, no, I get you. I don't remember names... I've yeah. totally forgotten a lot of it. Yeah, uh, same. Because I didn't like it there. Yeah, and so I you just kind of pack it up. Yeah. What, and no, but I also didn't hate it super. I, did, I, I, didn't, I just didn't like it. Yeah. And I, I did kind of hate it, but I, I didn't hate it to an extreme amount. I just didn't like it there. Yeah. So it's just not something I think about ever. For me, like, so I have two parts to this, and I'm going to start with, like, excuse me. Um, I had a lot of anxiety in high school. Yeah. A lot of undiagnosed anxiety, which, like, got facilitated as, like, angst and, like, anger towards everybody. And yeah. I just wanted to, like, I, I, like, I didn't spend any time in the hallways. I darted to class and sat down. And, oh, like, did the same. Yeah, because, like, I did, I looked big angry. crowds. I remember shit. people saying that, oh, yeah. there's so many, and uh, I remember a kid, I remember some girl, I was at a party after high school. Yeah. She said, I remember you, the kid that looked angry when you <laughs> Because I was angry looking when I went yeah, to class. Because yeah, I did not like being in that Focus. You didn't want to deal with it, people's shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like uh, a lot of what it was for me is like I grew up sort of being pushed towards that like popular crowd. There never was like a popular crowd. But there's like those kids that kind of their parents knew each other and like were yeah. around the same tax bracket. And they Wealthy, like. Wealthy. Yeah. Kids. Sort of wealthy suburban Cheerleaders, kids. Football players. Yeah. And which, like, you know, a lot of them turned out to be, like, kind of cool people. Yeah. Uh, and, the same in my high school. real actuality. They were all assholes. Yeah. They all assholes. <laughs> but, like, I was kind of pushed there towards... Assholes, yeah, of course. What are you going to do? But, like, I was kind of pushed towards those. And a lot of them I grew up with in the same classes in elementary school. So it's like you, like, know them and you know them your entire life. So it's like you grew up with them. which Because you kind of did, like I just said. Yeah. And <laughs> um, so, like, a lot of it was, like being around it and then like eventually like not being accepted by them or something at some point and then like having that sort of like anger towards it or having anger towards the kids that looked like they had a perfect life which you know who knows what the fuck was going on at home with them you don't know their story yeah in the that same person that you presumed had a perfect life lived in a crack house (laughs) Actually, yo, one one girl that was friends with a lot of them, her mom went to jail because her mom's boyfriend was running a meth lab in their shed. No, oh, dang, my neighbor did that in fifth grade. Shit. Yeah, I had a neighbor who was running a, like, a, <laughs> Damn. a meth house, like, next door. Shit, that's not good. Yeah. And this, like, this girl lived, like, right down the street from me. It was weird. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, but yeah, there was like a, I don't know, like that sort of shit. I just didn't uh, give too many shits. Um, I, I, all my friends, like I have a friend I hope I hang out with all the time. You know yeah. him, you've met him. Uh, I can't say his name. Oh, uh, okay. Can you mouth his name? Oh, uh, okay. And um, he remembers like all these high school names and he'll be like, it's like, oh, so Blotty Blah from high school nearly <laughs> ran me over on my way to work the other day and I'm like... I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, for real. I've seen people I went to high school with in cl- like. Right, in, he's uh, a bit an angry person, and he holds he holds grudges. Yeah. So he remembers these people. Yeah. He remembers that they annoyed him once. Yeah, in high school. So they bumped into him in the hallway once. Oh yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> so he yeah. Uh, yo, I'm really hoping that I have. He punched holes in every wall, like so. <laughs> in in your school? Huh? At yeah. school? Oh, okay. Just in his I, house. I just went into his. I went. I was in his house once, and I saw just a giant asshole yeah. on the wall. I knew those kids, and I also was one of those kids. Yeah. Um, what the fuck is this? Huh. Interesting. Um, I uh, I never really punched a hole in a wall. I like the thing I did a lot was like I would slam you ever a door. Set up a or set up a like a nice little restaurant or a bar in a hole that you punch in the wall. <laughs> 
You ever uh, you know, set up a, a five gallon water jug? Small and then business. <laughs> you set up a five gallon water jug and then uh, destroy it with your uh, katana? What? And post cool videos on the internet of it? No. Uh, me neither. Uh, so, I don't have the cord I need for this thing. Um, so that kind of sucks. It's an external hard drive. Um, shit. It's not, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I should just be able to delete some shit. Um, that doesn't really matter. Face I have. Is so weird in this photo. Lindsay. Oh, I thought you said your face, and I was like, yeah, it really does, man. These are celebrities we're looking at. Also, I don't like... Uh, this is a weird mirror. <laughs> I don't look like all these people. I don't like John Bennett's eyebrows. They look fake, man. They look filled in. Did he get big? Or is this just like a bad look? Uh, a bad photo. Probably a little of both. Probably a little. This was him in the, in the Thank You Next music video. Yeah. This is him now. I feel old yet. <laughs> that was, you know, he only did the Thank You Next week video a couple months ago. So it's weird. They he, uh, he got facial reconstruction <laughs> surgery and everything. He's already healed? What We're the fuck? We're looking at a weird photo. We're it's looking at a no context. For assistant the professor Jonathan Bennett of the College of Agriculture. University the Univers of Saskatchewan. <laughs> I thought that was in Africa, man. It's in Canada. Uh, I was thinking, uh, trying to make a joke about Swahili in Saskatchewan. I think that's like Native American Saskatchewan. No, Swahili's in a... Uh, no, I'm talking about Saskatchewan. Oh, 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 Saskatchewan. Uh, yeah, no, it's Native Canadian. Yeah. I think he, uh... I said Native American, didn't I? Yeah, Native Canadian. <laughs> Native Canadian. I mean, Northern American. I don't think that's a Native Canadian. Well, yeah, Doesn't that just mean you're from Canada? Aren't both from North America? So, yeah, 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 so yeah. Native American. So are you a Native American if you live in South Africa? But then again, actually just Native North, whatever this place is. <laughs> North America? Because America was not even its original name. Really? That's another thing white settlers gave it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did Was there like a name for... Actually, I don't think people had a concept of... You know how massive. What the call? Yeah, I don't think the they knew. Continent is, you know. No. Um. Yeah, sometimes he looks. Sometimes he looks a little chubby. Sometimes he looks hot as hell. So. Yeah, you know. yeah, I still I can't get past his eyebrows, man. They just look filled in. Yeah, they're know? they're fake eyebrows. Yeah. They they're, could be filled in. They could be filled in. Is he like a t? Is he just an actor? Or is he like TV hosting and shit? He's probably doing. Says model. Uh, he probably modeled in the past. Uh, yeah. Go to the other cast members. I just want to look at. Uh, what do you mean, like, go to the right? Amy Poehler, who directed Russian Doll, the show. Wait, did we ever figure out who directed. Uh, Not directed, wrote. Did we ever figure out who directed Mean Girls? No, we didn't look that up, actually. Uh, uh, Mark Waters. Mark Waters. So she just wrote it. Tina yeah, Fey okay. just wrote it. And then Wiseman. She's the one that wrote the book. Book, yeah. Yeah, yeah. she wrote the book. It says Parenting Instructor. <laughs> she wrote Queen Bees and Wanna Bees, the book it's based on. Is that like based on real shit or is that like a fictional story? Do you know? I think it's just like talking about bullying. Oh, just like full on. Yeah, it's just a bullying instruction guy. And then Tina Fey took that book and made a comedy movie out of it. Do you think it's like a. Helping your daughter survive clicks, gossip, boyfriends, and other realities of adolescence? Yeah. Uh, damn, that's a long ass. It's queen bees and wannabes helping your daughter survive clicks, gossip, boyfriends, and other realities of adolescence. It's a long fucking book title, man. Um, All right. Let's look at stuff on Twitter. <laughs> oh, is that, the, is that the theme song? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Now, let's get to it. I saw tweet, two tweets, two look different tweet threads. Twitter. <laughs> Sorry. Two... Tweet threads I saw just yesterday yeah. about why sex positivity is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because <coughs> apparently they tell women to have lots of random sex with dudes, and which is never what I've associated. No, nothing. I have never associated. Sex I mean, that, positivity. it just sounds like something a dude would say. Sex positivity is just have a bunch yeah, of random sex. Yeah, it's like, like it sounds like a dude would have. And maybe like, a, mis a miseducated woman, Lauren Hill. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> it's like one of those things like would say <laughs> like a dude that took one woman in gender studies class would say like oh dude this sex positivity shit's so rad girls will just have sex with you now <laughs> they're just all about having sex my odds are so high now <laughs> So am I. To me, what I've always determined as sexual activity just means, like, women having sex, and just people having sex, and not feeling shame about it. Or, like, uh... Just doing things that pleasure them. Yeah. Getting that nut, (laughs) and not feeling any shame about it. Yeah. No matter what religion or society says. Yeah, and, like, uh, sex positivity was, like, you know, um, supportive supportive of kinks, and was uh, very heavily, um... And focused like, on like education not trying to not being a complete dick like porn stars and shit yeah and, and like and sex promoting work. sex workers and you know not demonizing sex like it has been yeah um, but like this uh, it's one of two dreads I can't find the other dread oh, okay. which makes me mad but yeah. <laughs> it's the other lady um one of this this lady wrote a thread uh, named Claudia at white woman 69 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is funny. she a white woman no, it's an Asian woman. Oh, okay, I got you. That's funny. Uh, she says, let's talk about how sex positivity is a scam that encourages women to have valueless sex casually with no benefit. Um, so, are you going to read, like, the thread she posted, or? Yeah, I'm going to make points throughout. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. First tweet, uh, sex positivity will never make sex work socially acceptable, so stop trying to use it as an avenue. Uh, we should, we should go through them and then, like... Kind of yeah. give like a preface of our opinion. Yeah, so I guess. A little positive. Positive. Again, by the way, we know we're two dudes. Yeah, we're arguing over against a woman's. Yeah, like even me having a degree in women and gender studies doesn't Does mean not make it this more like has any clout. No. Like anything I say. Yeah. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's just this is just our opinions. These are our interpretations. I mean, and that's what a podcast is. When, yeah. when men love their opinions very much. When white dudes get together with a mic, you know, like me and Javon. Take that back. That was a joke. Javon, yeah. is, Javon is black. As far as you know. Actually, you know, because I put the photo. <laughs> I, I've met his parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I could be black. You've never met my dad. I've, I've seen. Yeah, you have seen my dad. The white guy. I've seen photos of your father. Yeah. Okay. Specs, yeah. Sex positivity is a privilege reserved specifically for white women. White women can make widely distributed porn and flick and flick up with the precedent. White femininity is such, on such a pedestal it can't be solely by sex work, which is a fair point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> white femininity is the like just like white male yeahness is the go to in America. Yeah, and white femininity is like the uh sort of traditional standards of beauty are sourced from yeah. white femininity it's in the western world yeah. yeah from you know blonde blue-eyed yeah big boob flat ass amanda seyfried <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually yeah. we shouldn't hate on amanda seyfried's butt i don't know what it looks like yeah I don't without know knowledge like yeah you know i'd have to see it to critique it <laughs> 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 that was the joke. DM her. DM a man cypher. I mean, I just I just wanna know what your ass looks like. <laughs> hey, Send me my, pics, please. <laughs> my friend and I do a podcast. We were trying to get some pictures of your butt that we could review. <laughs> we're doing a show we do a podcast called Butt Review. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good sketch. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, sex positivity is not for women of color. We cannot afford to have valueless sex. Not only are we undercompensated compared to white counterparts, it is most socially damaging to white women than it is to white women, which is also a fair point. To women of color than it is yes. to white women. It's not, you double said white women, I think. Did I? Yeah. Oh, damn. See, that's how go-to it is. <laughs> My mouth, let me go see. I'm sorry, is there another type of white? <laughs> uh, so, like, I, um... So everything I was introduced to sex positivity was like what we were talking about. Like it's always just been about, you know, not deeming sex bad and like, you know, making it seen as like a natural thing that people do and enjoy doing. And sex positivity even uh, promotes people that aren't into sex. I mean, I know sex positivity is for, is where my points, is where I I have trouble. Yeah, just, uh, I think sex pot. What I said when we were talking about this the other day was, like, if we separate the sex positivity movement from the idea of sex positivity, totally true, totally true. 
makes makes perfect sense. Everything um, she's saying. How how uh, society is given will give the white women a lot more leeway than they will. Yeah, give yeah, yeah. Color. And, and it's true. I mean, like even though even though I've met women of color that I would consider very sex positive. The only women you kind of see talking about sex positivity are the white women. Yeah, like white feminists love sex positivity. Yeah, sex. actually, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, it's not that they're not the only women. Yeah, when I'm saying white feminists, I'm talking about like the white faces. feminists. The faces. Yeah, and I'm talking like white feminism as like that idea that like yeah. up in the cloud thing, not just like white feminists. Yeah. I'm talking about white feminist theory. Yeah. Sex positivity is for white girls who do set girls gone well and they go the liberating or empowering experience. I am not sex positive. Yeah, see, I... I mean, girls gone wild is exploitive and gross. Yeah, but, yeah. But, I mean, if the white woman, they, if the woman yeah. <laughs> thinks of it as liberating and empowering, then... Yeah, and it can be. It, it, and, it was for her. Yeah, and that's what matters. I mean, but, girls gone wild is gross because Joe Francis is a gross piece of shit. Yeah, so, and, so. you know, the amount of, like, underage girls that have been on it and... Yeah. All yeah, the controversy sure. that's surrounded it, you know. Sex positivity for straight women is a farce. And this is becomes the other point that was also made in the main... This was the main point of the other thread I can't find. Okay. Which is that sex positivity is bad because women have sex with dudes who won't make them come. And, uh, like, have, have uh, casual sex with dudes who don't even try to make them come. And then... And, and women and, and apparently to both of these women they think that sex positivity means just having sex with casual lots of casual sex with dudes who won't even try to make you come I think that like Which is women a, having casual sex with men just includes having sex with men that don't give a shit whether you come or not that might yeah, yeah it's, it's very likely to happen yeah it's just cause men yeah just yeah. cause men men weren't taught <laughs> to well, give a shit like yeah and men perpetually think it's okay to not give a shit. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, like we're, we grew up. There's a lot of DJ Khaled's in this world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we grew up, I mean, how many jokes did you hear about, we made on ourselves earlier about like, <laughs> we were using the jokes ironically, but like the whole like myth of yeah, the I'm female orgasm. Yeah, I'm a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> uh, but like. You know, how many jokes are made about, like... The myth of a female orgasm. Yeah. yeah, or, like, you know, being impossible to find the G-spot or Which is whatever. A, is a thing that came from from dudes who, uh, comedians... Yeah. Who, like, won't, are not trying hard enough. So. Yeah, exactly. And that's... And I think sex positivity is supposed to open those branches... Or open those, like... <laughs> open them legs. <laughs> It's supposed to open the legs to better sex for all, right? Exactly. Like, because I I accompany sex positivity like heavily with sex education. Yeah. Like you know, I learned about sex on my own. Yeah. Due to like this whole. I mean, for sure, like sex education in school sucks. Is garbage. Yeah, in public school, and then probably. You would think it would be better in private schools, but most private schools are religious, so it's way yeah, worse. Catholic, Catholic schools. Yeah. yeah but, like, um, with me, like, I had... So, growing up with that whole idea that, like, dudes inherently suck at sex, my whole initiative, once I started, like, noticing my sexuality, was like, all right, I gotta know everything yeah. about sex, so I do not disappoint. The yeah. only thing I care about in my life... Is being good at sex, because like that's <laughs> I, that's I, if I don't I accomplish believe, shit I, in my I, life. I don't even think you're being ironic right now. <laughs> I'm not. Really I'm not, dude. Genuinely, like that's one of the only things I give a major shit about is being like at least decent at sex. Like, honestly, because like imagine dying and like never making a girl nut. Like imagine that being. The I don't way. know if I'll watch it, but you could probably do. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't. I don't think I got the dick for that. To be honest. I don't have the abs. If I had abs, Dude, I would be. They jump. don't give a shit. I know, but like, I'd, they I'd, don't give a shit. I would want to be in better shape. To be yeah. Fair. I. I couldn't because I wouldn't want to watch myself. That's like one of the coolest things about like doing porn is like, oh, cool, I get to watch myself. Like, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's okay. And uh, <laughs> like, I would just see myself on screen like. Also, I do want to say, um, I think it's sex positive that in a lot of porn, we see a lot of dudes that are in a lot of different shapes, and that makes me feel great about myself. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you see a dude that's like, kind of looks like you, and you're like, oh, 
That's see, what I look I see like. Plenty of chubby black dudes. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, but honestly, I don't even watch that much porn with black dudes in it because you know how frequently and insanely racist it is. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> And even when they're not trying to be racist, it's kind of racist. I talked about this. There's a series on YouTube. A series? Huh? A series on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, uh, by this channel called Jubilee. Yeah. Where they ask, uh, does blankety blank type group of people yeah. think the same? Oh, uh, okay. Like, do black people think the same? Do white people think the same about race is one? Oh, uh, okay. Do porn stars think the same? Do women think the same? I will say right now from... And they have these lines in the ground that say disagree, strong disagree, completely disagree, completely like the agree. Like seven, yeah. the like five. Yeah, they got lines. Uh, there's a name for that. I forget, but uh, there's a name for that. Yeah, they're hard to see on the camera, so they have this like thing that goes across at the very beginning of the video. Oh, uh, okay. And then they... Uh, do they like... They, they have move the women around. lined up, uh, okay. and then they ask them a question, and the women, they sep- the, the people, they yeah. separate in the groups. They separate to yeah. each one of those categories to show how much they agree or disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, the answer to every video is no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's it's fun. Um, also, it made me laugh the one where they had white people uh, they had white people asking about race. Yeah. There was like two hipstery looking white dudes and one hipstery looking white woman and they had progressive views and yeah. two kind of uh <laughs> Kind of redneckish yeah. white women. <laughs> Guess who had the better views on race? <laughs> the rednecks? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was looking for a twist they ending. They still didn't have good... I like, wanted you I to M. Night Shyamalan honestly, that shit. Honestly, if I was to talk to those hipster-ass white people, I bet they have problematic views on race. Oh, yeah, no. In the video, they definitely came across as the better looking. Women. Yeah. I think that's, like, part of it is, like, they kind of just knew, like, yeah. okay, we gotta, we gotta go to this end, because, uh... No, but you'd be surprised. What do you mean? You'd be surprised. About by, what? Uh, by the group. Like, it's not like the, the whose people's points of view aren't predictable. Oh, yeah. No, in, no. The, in the videos. Um, but, like, I, it's a... They don't really seem to use the same people either, so... Yeah. Um, it's a... Like, it, it paint, it's a weird one for me, like, about sex positivity. And I think that, like... Oh, I never got to... I never read the full thing about sex rates. Let me read that one. Oh, okay. Sex positivity for straight women is a farce. This becomes abundantly clear when you look how straight women orgasm rates during sex. How are you going to convince me to have an unsatisfied, unsatisfying sex with a man who offers me nothing as empowerment? Let them white girls fall for that shit. Mm-hmm. And her next point is sex viability is better than sex positivity. I just coined sex viability, so credit me, white girls will never really bite this. <laughs> We can go. We can renegotiate this whole sex positivity thing. The majority of men to make women orgasm and then racism disappear. So never. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, it, it just this means don't have shame about it. It doesn't yeah. mean you have to fuck this. That's the thing. That's really like, my point with both. It's yeah, like, like that was never a. But it was like you know have as much sex as you want, want to. Like you can never it. have sex ever. That sex positive. Yeah. And this doesn't leave people alone. Yeah, like it's That's truly sex positive. Sex positivity in the like autonomy of your sexuality. Yeah. Um and like I I don't know. You don't want to have casual sex? Don't you have casual it, sex. And, and it makes you feel bad? Yeah. Then that that's on that's, Yeah. That's Do you. Yeah. But don't be shitty towards others. Yeah. Let other people do what they want to do. Um and like I uh I don't know. And like, a, everything's linked to racism, but... <laughs> yeah, but, like, I just... I never... That, to me, doesn't... Sex positivity didn't seem like that to me. Um, and I, I'm interested to see who it did. And a woman tweeted her, and she, yeah. like... Oh, okay. Not, well, DM'd her or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she took pictures of it. Or is it DM or Twitter? Actually, night mode. I think these are in night mode. <laughs> Mine's in, like... Oh, day mode? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, just means see, you have a different color Twitter. Yeah. She says, seeing your thread on sex positivity really made me think. I can count on one hand the amount of men that have gotten me off. My body count is much higher. I was surely about to have some more have some more than likely disappointing sex this weekend, but now fuck, I'm just going to wait till someone's, someone I like will actually get me off. I just had to tell you because you low-key saved me from having bad sex in the future. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Also, like, you know... I mean, yeah, just don't have casual sex. My thing is, like, 
first off, straight dudes need to give want, a shit. Yeah, give a exactly. shit. Want to do better, and also like I and I've said this to partners before. Like, don't let me like get away with not getting you off. Like, yeah, and that's my main thing about like faked orgasms is like. Former porn star Cardi Cruz responded to the thread. Okay. She, and she's pretty much saying what we said. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which is um, we thought at first. She said it later. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. <laughs> we were the originators of sex positivity. Us two straight. <laughs> well, you're bi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's what sex positivity is about. Having valueless sex of men is not that who don't give you pleasure is not positive. Sex positivity is about shedding shame over sexuality. That having tons of casual sex with work partners. I, I think that like people do use sex positivity uh, to justify some unhealthy behaviors with their sexuality. Yeah. Um, but that's a specific case. And, yeah. Like that's like a that, that's more so the result of unhealthy behaviors and the reasons for those unhealthy behaviors than it is whether so or not it's okay for them to have sex get with to people. This specific get to this specific re- interpretation of sex positivity. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. I think it's like a one of those things where like... Uh, because when I think of the word, I don't even immediately yeah. go, just have lots of casual sex. Yeah, no, like I... I mean, unless you're just listening to creepy-ass dude's opinion. Let's yeah. Go, okay, you know that podcast, You Must Remember This? Yes. It's a history one about Golden Age of Hollywood. And her series about Charlie Manson, she talked about like... <laughs> What? Just uh, South Park made it so weird for me to hear Charlie Manson. Why? Oh, because that episode? Yeah. Well, because nobody called him Charlie. It was Charles Manson. Yeah. Always. And then somebody called him Charlie, and it's like this weird, like... Well, people called him Charlie before. Yeah, but it's like Charlie Manson. his name is Charles. Charles. So. But it's like Charlie Manson makes him seem like a way cooler dude like than a, Charles. Like a cool dude. Yeah. Like a cool boy man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Charlie. Yeah. That's, that's your boy Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Charlie Manson. There's he go, killing again. Uh, <laughs> There's he goes, uh, manipulating women into uh, having sex for money and uh, killing. Yeah, for him. Yeah. Uh, but like he he talked about that's what Char- Charlie Manson benefited from. That he benefited from uh, benefited benefit. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, when you go have measurements done for your suit, but it happened in the past. You benefited. <laughs> I benefited. Uh, Sorry, that was, I had to make that one. Uh, he benefited from the cult, the summer of love culture. Yeah, the free the love, free love, movement, like free sex, blah, which blah. Uh, was a ma- like, and I think it's like which known a lot of like hip, hip, hippie, yeah. dude, piece of shit hippie dudes, yeah, convince women that have sex with them. It was uh, a, without condoms and get and everyone got crabs and yeah. It was essentially like it became okay for women to have sex. Yeah. But that autonomy was really just fueled from the want of men to have more sex. Yeah. And it's, that was really it wasn't really not about completely, f- but yeah, yeah, the yeah. Dudes took advantage of it to, so they yeah. could convince it, women to have sex with. It was only like it was only beneficial to the men having sex with the women. As well leads to Jane Fonda's terrible marriage. Maybe I, don't I never told you about. It. I don't know. A lot Jane Fonda was married to this dude. Yeah. Um, let me look it up. Can't uh, remember his name. Back in the sixties. Uh, okay. Jane Fonda. Um, For some reason, I dude, I really don't know what Jane Fonda looks like off the top of my head. Yeah, look her up. Like I, whenever I think of Jane Fonda, I kind of think about either Suzanne Somers or Farrah Fawcett. Because you're thinking of old, like... Blonde, 70s... Uh, sex symbols. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think of the... Uh, I think of the... Um, Farrah Fawcett one, where she's, like, on the roller skates or on the skateboard. And then I think of Susan... Uh, Susan Suzanne Summers with the Thigh Master, is what I think about. And then I think of that... You remember Mickey Avalon? Yeah. The rapper... He did that song "My Dick." Never heard with, it. With uh, I looked it up. With but Dirt I Nasty, never who was uh, you know who Dirt Nasty is yeah. though, right? Never, never had any interest in it. Yeah, so. you've heard it. It's not that great. 
it was cool to me when I was in like eighth grade. But, yeah. Uh, but then again, I mean, we all had liked regrettable white rappers. At one yeah. Point. Yeah. I heard uh, "I Love College." Yeah. <laughs> Asher Rod. Yeah. There was this one song that I really liked. He literally liked, seems like a cool guy, but his music's still trash. Or something. Yeah, and he's still making music. Like he's like Logic. If Logic was full white and wasn't as successful. Logic sucks though. Yeah, logic does suck. I haven't heard Supermarket, but and then I I don't care. And I, I saw I, Fantana's yeah, tweet Fantana and it was like, like I looked up the yeah. I looked up the lyrics <laughs> oh, and I'm like okay. Jesus Christ, this song is fucking he actually at one point says I'm not a stalker. Oh, that's great. In the lyrics. I think it's related to a book he wrote or something. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait, wait, logic wait, wait. wrote a book. <laughs> no wait, I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Bruh. How many rappers have written books? Not, not a lot. Ice-T wrote a book, right? Probably memoirs. Is what, more rappers are probably mem- mem- memoirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his book is fiction. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I think I heard something that she, when she was married to one of her early husbands, I think Roger for them. Okay. He made her have a lot of sex she didn't, like, really wasn't down with on some free love shit. Oh. And I mean, like, the whole group love mentality and shit it was really a this is something i one of my philosophy professors she talked to us about it and uh and it was interesting coming from someone who lived through that movement and was in college then yeah um made a really heavy point about how like it was really only you know beneficial towards the men it was a something used to guilt women um like, once it became okay for multiple women to have, or for women to have multiple partners, it became one of the, and women to have, like, sexual autonomy, once that became widely accepted, it was, like, used against women into, oh, well, you had sex with yada, 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 so why won't you, like, that guilty shit, that guilt yeah. trip shit. Not some guilt shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, there it is. I, I, I thought I lost it. Yeah. It turns out I've also, also booked my, the other three. I didn't even realize uh, it. Yeah, okay. What's the other thread? Uh, yeah, it's it, that thread is completely about how, like, women women have casual sex with men who don't, uh, what? I just don't know what this is. Oh, these are 60s photos. Uh, from, like, Clute? What was Clute? It's a movie she was in. Uh, okay, I didn't know that. She was a model and stuff. Oh, uh, okay. In the movie? Well, no, in real life. I don't know about the movie. Oh, uh, uh, Okay. Um, so, like, it's, uh, I don't know. But, like, for real, like, uh, that's something I've always taken, like, some initiative That entire thread was all about the... Dudes not making women come. Yeah, and then running off. And I think that that's, like, a lot to do with, like, uh, what men are taught sex is. Yeah, it's and, just, like, like, I don't know if that's, like, a... And I guess both of them are thinking that this makes sex positivity a bad feminist movement because dudes don't... don't don't even try that's on dudes yeah that's on dudes it's not that's really a, on sex positivity just that's a it. not feminism's fault that's something feminism is working to defeat yeah and like I just I never understood like could you imagine being that selfish yeah you know? I could but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to <laughs> uh, yeah no I see what you're saying but like I would never that's not something that could I could never be me <laughs> like I could never like because I'm just think about that like you suck at sex could you imagine just knowing that yeah like how like uh. now we need to get to this oh the jagged little pill the jagged little pill yeah jagged little pill Jezebel a woman who writes for Jezebel the yeah. feminist uh, former Gawker website oh, okay. that didn't go down when Gawker went down uh, wrote an article uh, yeah. saying that the classic 90s alternative rock album by Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill, is bad. Was Jagged Little Pill a song? It was the name of the album. Oh, it was just the name of the album? Yeah, just the name of the album. Okay, understood. The album's considered a classic. Okay, understood. Because it's got all the... It's Great. got all the Alanis Morissette songs you know on it. Yeah, it does. Down at, it's not bad. I don't know, wait, I'm, I'm not, I'm here. To remind you, and uh, isn't uh, it yeah. ironic? And all, all those. Wait, what was the what was the one? Isn't it ironic? Oh, uh, okay. What's the other one? Uh, I'm worried I'm getting it confused with the uh, Sarah McLaughlin. You probably will. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Oh. She was a lot more softer. This was like. You, 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 I don't know. Yeah. What was that? That's the song I was just saying. Really? Like. Yeah, yeah, she does like repeat the words, but it's just redone. That's a, that's on that album, but I don't think it's the same song. Maybe, maybe it isn't. Well, go to the very top. Oh, sorry. 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 Uh, I didn't realize how far I went. It's written by let's get let's get the the writer's name right, Tracy Clark Flory. That's uh right there. It's called uh, Jackalope Hill. This is actually very bad. The other day, my husband said to me, "I decided." Not to try to reason with you about buying Jack Little Pill on vinyl and bought it what was and bought what was in our Amazon account. Amazon cut. I gave him a pity and look and said, It is it is an amazing album. You'll see, you'll see. My husband is the reason we have a record play in the first place and then the reason we have albums by the likes of Fleetwood Mac, Miles Davis and the Beach Boys. At this point my contributions to our vinyl collection have been Tupac Saw Eyes on Me and Rihanna's Auntie. Uh can I just say hundred percent guaranteed those are both reissues. Of Auntie too. <laughs> well, that one's new, but uh, the Fleetwood Mac, Miles Davis, Beach Boys, and Tupac's All Eyes yeah, on Me. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> fucking audio files, dude, man. <laughs> Says somebody who hasn't bought an album for themselves in three years. <laughs> somebody who hasn't played an album on their like kind of okay, good budget record player. Audio pleb. <laughs> why, why would you buy a reissue? Why don't you spend <laughs> a absorbent amount of exactly. money on something that just they got have reprinted? Kids. <laughs> <laughs> they have kids. Yeah, no. that's why. I know, but like, I feel like buying like Tupac. Also, this couple is definitely white as shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> buying Tupac's All Eyes on Me new is kind of lame to me. Like, that's not something I want on vinyl. Like, unless it's an original, because it's like I can just play it. On something, you know? It's too big a hit for it to not be, you know? Yeah. Okay, sorry. My taste in music is pretty much either what the cool kids were listening to back in middle school or contemporary top 40. You see, I'm exactly the kind of person who buys Jack a Little Pill on vinyl, and I'm exactly the kind of person who buys records via Amazon Prime. This yeah. And diagraph overlaps completely. Yeah, it does. Which, like, I'm inter- Genuinely, and this is coming from... It's a normie. It's a normie. Yeah, it's kind of normie, but that's not what I want to say. Uh, the... The record collecting enthusiast, or like whatever the fuck pretentious bullshit I just said in me, uh, kind of wants to know how Amazon ships their records. I'm just curious about that. Wonder how they do it. I would, I would probably do a thing Fantano's been talking about for years. Oh, the Buy uh, me, please. Yeah, yeah, that's just kind of cool. Yeah. But like, I'm wondering how they ship it, cause like, it's a record they and throw like, it, like like a frisbee. Yeah, and it <laughs> just gets up. to you. <laughs> They have that scary ass robot. You've seen that commercial? I don't know. Don't, you haven't seen it? No, not off the top of my Amazon's head. Amazon's got some robots to look at shit from that. Yeah, yeah. It's not even crazy. a drone. Yeah, oh shit. It's like a full on robot. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a it bomb. Your neighborhood. Detonating. Yeah, that's what it looks defusing. like. It's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, that's shit. creepy as shit. Uh, For real, buy, trust little, Amazon in no way about any of this shit. Little known fact all vinyl records Amazon. are made in Australia and thrown from Australia because they're the only ones that know how to do it correctly. Crikey. Yeah, they just throw it, and that's how all records get shipped. When that square-shaped Amazon package arrived one afternoon, I ripped it open and put it on immediately, filling the thrill of nostalgic anticipation. This was more than two decades after I first listened to the album as a 12-year-old. I purchased a CD at a Tower Records, no doubt, after seeing Atlanta on MTV. Pee. Yeah. You, Angrily stumbling around you, in the desert. I for... don't know. Yes, you I don't know music video. <laughs> I don't, you know, that was unplanned, but that kind of worked pretty well. I remember the shock of resignation. <laughs> Of recognition, recognition as her long ass, tangly hair, and a spasming when she was a weird, dirty, uncontainable girl just like me. The song channeled all of my simmering rage at dickhead little boys at puberty's own slot and at this suffocating wave of feminine expectation about to wash over me. Needless to say, I was now, as I slipped the vinyl out of its sleeve in a different era in life phase. I long ago made it through puberty, although my simmering rage at feminine expectation continued. I was no longer listening to my beat up Sunny Disc Man, but rather a nostalgically engineered, re engineered record player. I just picked up my toddler from day here as becoming the cliche parent imposing useful cultural artifacts upon her offspring. Soon as the trippy guitar and harmonica of all I really want kicked in, my toddler st- started dancing in stomping circles, and I br- felt briefly vindicated. See, you already like it, I exclaimed in this little human whose favorite song is Baby Shark. 
If I was honest, though, the bing, bing, bing of the electric guitar, the wobbly expectation of her voice, and the feeble lyrics, enough about me, let's talk about you for a minute, enough about you, let's talk about life for a while. That plant of seed of doubt. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go down. Yeah. When I did it, I was on the volume. Next next was you had enough. If it's halting, hunt. Halting, hunting, halt, halting, halting, hunting, open. Oh, God. Fuck you, Carrie. I want you to know I'm happy for you. That's how you write. <laughs> I know, but like, halting, haunting, that's a difficult one to say. Yeah, that's a, it's called a, I forgot what it's called, alliteration. Yeah, it's alliteration. When the electric guitar picked up and she will, you, yep, you're right. What? You, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I cringed a little bit. Yeah, What had once felt should. enlivening and validating, now felt grating and corny. <clears throat> Yeah. That electric yeah. guitar kept yeah. on clanking. Our electric guitar is usually so electric. I was finding it hard to think, hard to be, hard to exist in the same room, same room as this music. Stop being dramatic. Here's the thing. I think that reissue just didn't really get mastered well. So we just lost uh, 10 minutes of <clears throat> audio? Yeah, about 10 minutes. Uh, I was reading the rest of this article. Yeah, we had, it, we had some nice things said. So yeah. let's see if we can redo it. Um, all right, pick it back up. Going from last thing Bobby said, I turned down the volume, then I checked them to the, check the RPM on the record player, which my son often tweaks to where effect, but all it was as it should be, and yet was not, not at all. Where was the album that I, go up, sorry. Where was the album that I love so dearly and deeply? Go down. When Perfect, a plane heard a song about the pressure to be good enough, came on. I had a realization. Jagged Little Pill was Baby Shark for mid-90s angsty tween girls. Yeah. It's not. I, yeah. I, and during during the sound loss that we had, um, I also looked up Baby Shark, which I didn't know is what the Papa Sugar Charlie situation thing. The creepy kids video from YouTube. Yeah. That was popular on Twitter until they... Off. <laughs> yeah, Twitter. and like Danny Gonzalez got his like video removed, and yeah. he like threatened legal action on Twitter, <laughs> and, and then uh, it boop right back. It's it became like a popular meme song for a while. Yeah, it's not a got remix. Jack a little pill was a <clears throat> anthem of an album. Yeah, Baby Shark is never an anthem for anything. Yeah, no, other it's than a memes. I, and up even on the Billboard charts on pure force of meme. Even like. If there was a haram, it's like having a song about haram <laughs> end up on the. Well, it's like having Harambe be a revered album. Like it's like calling <laughs> it that. Album. You know what I'm saying? Did, didn't some rapper name an album Harambe? No, actually, no. <laughs> Young Doug had an album where he named a song. Where he named yeah. a song Harambe. Harambe. Yeah. Does he even talk about Harambe? Is there like a mention? I don't know. Is it like a not. like a shout out? He has a song about Kanye West. We're just gonna bring up Kanye West. Oh, uh, Elton John. Yeah, yeah. I think he has a song about awesome yeah. Elton John on there. Yeah, that he doesn't really. Is there an Elton John sample at least? That's a different song. Oh, uh, that's high. Oh, uh, damn. Yo, Young Thug's just like all over the place with his like song titles, man. Like he's not give a fuck. No. Um. But yeah, I, it's really not I, even, I, and I don't get the comparison she's trying to make either, because it doesn't make any sense. Like it's not. It, yes, it's marketed towards tween girls. Yes, it was marketed towards tween girls, and I think it that, was that was marketed towards women. I, yeah, but also I, I think teenage that, women in particular, because she was also young, barely out of her teens when that. Yeah. Happened. And I think that's also to Alanis's doing. I think her music appealed to that demographic. Yeah, she was an angry teenage girl making exactly. music for, for angry, angry teenage, teenage girls. girls. But Baby Shark is like saying like she was an industry plant or like some shit like that. Yeah. Saying that like, you know, Travis Scott playing for Alanis <laughs> Morissette. Yeah. Wait, who is that one? Huh? Who's the? What's that industry plant? Uh, people say Travis Scott's an industry plant, and oh, also probably. they some. Uh, there was a video on YouTube where a guy said that. Travis planted some has an industry plan on his, on Astral World. I don't know. I forgot the dude he was talking about. Uh, really. Like, well, I don't think he's on one of my. I don't think he's on one of my favorite songs for now. So I don't think I know who he's talking uh, about. Okay. I mean, uh, people say Billy Eilish, Eilish. Yeah. Eilish. I think it's Eilish. Eyelash. Yeah. Whatever. Billy Eyelash. 
It spoke in the simplest language, literally and musically, to that particular psychological stage of development at that particular cultural moment. She was every bit of the flip side of tender earnestness and fuck you anger that's sort of quintessentially middle school. Just teenage in general, really. That's me talking about. But also, like, I think, like, middle school for them was a little different. I don't, I don't think middle school was as, like, as what? it was for us. You think? What do you mean? Do you think, like, middle school was, like... What? I, I'm trying to think of, like, 90s middle school versus the middle school we experienced, and I, I don't know if it was any Similar different. Similar feelings. <clears throat> I don't know what yeah, you mean. Yeah, just from young, pre- and adolescence, you know, pre-adolescence. Well, entering adolescence, not pre. Puberty. Puberty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was the, every bit the flip side of tender earnestness and fuck you anger. Just like that in between is what she's trying to say, right? Or like a back and forthness. Um, I I think she's I'm saying like both tender and earnest. I mean, these are feelings that you. that tweens feel. I mean, the same feelings that teenagers feel. Yeah. I really don't see a difference because you know teenagers can be earnest. Yeah. And they can also have plenty of fuck you anger. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the song begins alongside some light guitar. Sometimes it's sometimes is never quite enough. If you're flawless and you win my love, don't forget to win first place. Don't forget to keep that smile on your face. These are not profound lyrics. Well, again, this is the thing I said. They're in the 10 minute uh, <laughs> that is lost to, to the sands of time. Yeah. Um, they were profound to you at a certain point. Yeah, and and she says that. These are not, she says, these are not profound lyrics here. They are not time as a holy fuck that they speak to my sense of not being of not being nearly good enough. According to Boys, according to Seventeen, according to MTV Spring Break specials, Atlantis was angry and unruly about not being good enough. And, um, well, then it did speak to you. Were they profound to you, profound to you once upon a time? Yeah, and you, I think that it was profound in the context in which it came. You know, yeah. like, this was, this was the first time, you know, Alanis was pioneering this sort of music, was sort of pioneering this as a mainstream sort of acceptability thing you know what i'm saying like yeah. yeah it was acceptable and it was the first time that this sort of shit was played on the radio you know she she huffed real hard into a harmonica about it and filled me a few go girl feeling the same is true when i see right through you i went through ooh 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 the bullshit too side note for another day can we talk about the lyrics you took a long hard look at my ass and played golf for a while go down sorry it wasn't even ironic, and it's infamous misuse of the word that only broke me. It was these lyrics. You live, you learn, you live, you learn, you cry, you learn, you lose, you learn, you bleed, you learn, you scream, you learn. I screamed, oh, did I? And then I texted my husband, a Mia Copa. Jagged little pill is actually very bad. This feels like apostasy. Alliance has lived in my head for the past two decades. Uh, we have to look that up. Yeah, know. we had to look up apostasy. Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with steamed bread. <laughs> All right. I don't know what that means. Pasta? Nah. Yeah, yeah I could have said like Pasta steamed. Pasta means like renouncing uh, religious beliefs. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. she said, this made her, it's, it feels like I was renouncing. It's like sacrilege. Jack a little pill, yeah. It's blasphemous. Alanis has lived in my head for the past few decades as the awful embodiment of a powerful, unruly, inspiring, angry woman. And she still is. Yeah. Even if you yeah. no longer think highly of this album. Yeah. And I mean, I have another point that we didn't say um, during the 10 minutes of uh, non existence now. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think that, like, you know, if we look at, like, look at, like, early rap, and that was groundbreaking. Yeah. When you look back at early rap, through the progression we have made in the point we are right Shit now. It sounds like, corny. Yeah, it's Just corny as fuck. uniformly corny. Yeah. And, you know, this is this is the start I'm, of something. In no no time soon am I going to go back to listen to old LL Cool J. Yeah. Because I can't. Uh, LL Cool J I'm kind of alright with. It depends cool on the J. song. Yeah. I'm not going to go back and... It makes me physically ill to hear Sugar Hill Gang's uh, Rapper's Delight anymore. I still like it. Actually, you know, last summer... I not played, every... Not, I'm not saying every... There's plenty of yeah. shit that does sound terrible, but 
Sugar Hills Gang Rappers Delight still sounds good to me. Yeah. I mean, it definitely sounds old as shit. It is it corny. It sounds a bit corny, but it's not, like, terrible. But it's like... LL Cool J, for me, at times, feels that way. It's kind of like listen to, listening to, like, Iron Man by Sabbath. You know, it's like, eh. It's like one of those songs that's like, eh. It doesn't sound corny to me. Iron Man doesn't sound corny. Just because it's old and it's original and you've heard it a hundred times doesn't make it bad. Yeah, I know, but like it's for me, I guess. Yeah. That's one of those songs that kind of makes me like <sighs> at one point this was like the coolest thing, right? Yeah. Sort of like uh, embarrassed nostalgia, kind of. You know? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, same year I first listened to Jagged Little Pill my dad took me to see her perform at the Greek Theater in Berkeley we stood in the mosh pit where Platt wearing 20 something cow students openly smoked pot looking extremely impressed with themselves afterward as the crowd poured out into the street sounds alone. right yep exactly yeah <clears throat> when like is... three years later it's legalized for medicinal use <laughs> where? <laughs> Berkeley California was it it was Actually, no, I take that back. It was legal for medicinal use in the 70s in California. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. You're talking about the doctor shit? What? You're talking about getting a weed card? I'm not talking about getting a weed card. I'm talking about, like... It wasn't made illegal. It wasn't made... From... Oh, medicinal use. Yeah. Medical, yeah. medicinal, yeah. What? It wasn't in the 90s. They didn't start that in the 90s, did it? No, I'm saying they start... Well, it had been... You had been able to get a, like... I'm looking at medicinal use... In California, um, specifically to California, because they were doing that shit in the seventies, man, seventies and eighties. You could get legal weed or medical weed. It was also a really weird process where like shit would just show up at your door and you were on like an FBI list or some shit. No, you're right. Yeah, I in the mid nineties, it became uh, widespread. Yeah, but it had been. It was very difficult to get. Uh, it was only in severe cases and like cancer patients um, that you could get medicinal Sorry, marijuana. These in cancer the patients movies. taking out all weed. Man, I don't even smoke at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Man, them cancer patients be smoking Reggie. Be kicking them in the face to take their weed. <laughs> I'll be getting. I'll put my balls in the give microwave. Me, give me this weed, <laughs> Baldy. <laughs> <laughs> Show up to every chemo. Rob every car at the chemo center. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just steal all their weed. And change. Pushing kids out of the... <laughs> push, taking weed out of kids... Taking pot candy out of kids' hands. <laughs> Actually, wouldn't they support that? What? Wouldn't that be, like, good for society? What? Wouldn't taking be... pot candy out of kids' hands? Yeah. I mean, if they're kids with cancer, then no, you're still being a dick. You still... Yeah, okay. It's like, they need that. The weed's not... They're not like, They're not it. smoking it for... So the, the kids can start smoking it. Yeah. They're smoking it because the, it, they're not it faking makes the tennis. pain less t- intense. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> they're not smoking it for a uh, tennis elbow. Yeah. Like, the kids aren't doing it for fun. Yeah. I mean, the, I don't know. I mean, maybe you question the teenagers, but the kid, why would the kid be no. thinking shit out for them? But also, like, weren't you always you high as a kid? You can't fake cancer as well. You can't it's, fake you cancer. You can fake cancer. You How? shave your head, you go to a chemo center, they will treat your ass any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> no doctors, no nothing. Wow, shut up. You shave your head, come into work the next day. Everybody, you can get everybody to think you have cancer. Nobody will question shit. <laughs> <coughs> oh, this cancer in my lungs. What if Clark? What if <coughs> Lex Luthor tried to fake cancer? <laughs> maybe did that's he why cancer? he did. Maybe that's why he was justified. Maybe He's that's bald. why it took Superman to see through the bullshit with his X-ray vision. <laughs> you just bald, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he hated him. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to smoke some weed. Damn you, Superman! <laughs> That's Skeletor. I don't get it. That was a full-on Skeletor. <laughs> what? How's Clark Kent sound? I mean, how's Lex Luthor sound? I, I genuinely don't know. Well, then that's Lex Luthor. <laughs> Alanis's white limo went driving by, and I ran after him, after her, screaming as she lifted a single hand through the roof and flicked and me waved. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right at me, I was pretty sure. She was a statement of possibility for my 12-year-old self and for many other girls and women at the time. Down's been called a powerful DIY feminist statement. Some have asked whether it's the most feminist out of the 90s. No. It's not. Fuck no. And we said this is I read the original uh You article. read it originally. Yeah. And like, I said this in the 10 minutes. Yeah, no. Like, fuck no. no fuck, 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 fuck no. 
But it is a feminist album. Yes. Just like it's that, up there, too. It's like that point you said about Cardi B. Oh, yeah. Like, Cardi B is not, like, this... Her music is feminist. Yeah. But it's not the most feminist. Yeah, no. She was, as Alison Yero has argued, part of the crop... You should probably get closer to the mic and stop back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, has argued part of the crop of that era as women rockers, including Fiona Apple and Meredith Brooks, who represented that commercialization of Riot Girl Rage. We had a segment already. Yeah. About, like... Like, the commercialization of Riot Girl Age is important to note here. Like, it's not uh, comparing... Because Fiona Apple's not a Riot Girl. No. When we think Riot Girl, we're thinking Kathleen Hannah. Yeah. 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 So, like, uh, Riot, they're Riot Girl in the sense that it was palatable and marketable. Um, whereas, you know, a little more... And angry. Yeah. Angry women, but... The- I, my, argument originally, my argument originally was that they weren't the first women to be angry on records and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely not. But And then we had this weird thing about Bjork. Where I was, yeah, but Bjork's not an alt rocker. She's not. I just no. she's so she alternative. She makes alternative music. Yeah. Not alt rock. She was in a alt rock band, but not eighties alt rock, which is different from nineties alt rock. I'd like to you know, that's kind of an interesting topic to explore. I wonder what 80s Would you rock. say 80s, 80s R.E.M. sounds that sounds like Radiohead? No. To, to like 90s rock? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Would you say a lot of like 80s um stuff from like uh they might be giants? Sounds like oh shit. Yeah. What about like new wave? Was that alt rock? No. It was just new wave. Just new wave. That's a different giant completely. Yeah. So, but like Flock of Seagulls was... Also, New Wave was just like a mixture of a bunch of genres. Not even just rock. It was just like a... That's why they called it Literal New Wave. New wave. Yeah. It, was like, it was a mixed pot of yeah. a lot of popular genres of music. And it was a uh, sort of an amalgamation. Yeah. Like there was like pop and like electro sort It was of a pop gumbo of <laughs> it a was genre. It was very experimental and uh, boundary it, pushing. To a certain extent, some people just... They made... We do this type of New yeah. Wave... Yeah, and that's what people think of as new wave at this point. Oh, like Talking Heads or uh, no, talk, not talk, Talking soft Heads. Soft experimenters. So, not even soft sell. There were like maybe Flock of Seagulls. Flock of Seagulls was new wave. Yeah. What about um? um uh, nostalgia for Jagalo. I gotta read this. Uh, everybody wants to rule the world. Everybody. Uh, Tears for fear. Tears for fear. Yeah. New wave. Tears for fears are yeah. New wave. I wouldn't say they were. I don't know, there's a lot of there's a lot of good new wave. Gary uh Gary Fisher Fears was also good. So yeah. Gary what's his name? Cars? The Cars? N- no, Cars. The song. Yeah. Here in my car. Uh Gary Newman? Good. Gary Newman, yeah. He's also good. I don't know. But New Wave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm asking. Was that synth pop? Uh, uh, that's for another day. Yeah, that's a that's a dense one. The nostalgia for Jack Little Pill is such that it's soon to become a Broadway musical. This makes Buffalo Landis in the album, which she co-wrote and recorded at the young age of nineteen, culturally significant, but it doesn't make it good timeless music. <laughs> if it's get, if it's getting a musical, if it's like so beloved by a whole generation of It's just a little timeless. It's a little timeless. I think that that's timeless in a new way where we have to put it in context. Listen, there's no such thing as objective good. No, no, no fucking way. No, no everything's subjective. Yeah. My hatred for friends is specific to me. <coughs> I would make and an a argument. lot of other people, but not. I would. We could. I would. I would push for that to be the objective take on friends. Yes. Yeah. Any day of the week. Yeah. Whether or not that gets taken up is and a good story. Say, no, it doesn't mean buy it on vinyl. Buy it on vinyl if you want to buy it on vinyl. Yeah, if you want to have that in your collection, eh, do it. Yeah. But didn't didn't sell me on it. I don't think Alanis could have sold me on that album on vinyl. Why? <laughs> Not something that appeals to me. The album doesn't appeal to you? I mean, like, it's good, but it doesn't hit me. Like, it hits a lot of other people. Mainly because I'm a dude and I didn't experience a lot of these emotions that she's talking about. I can, re- I can understand them and, like, you know, empathize. But it doesn't... It's Does not it work like for a, you? It, also, it's, like, not the... It's, like... It, I think that one of the things is that it's... After a while, pop music, once you hear something as pop music for so long and you see it as so culturally relevant, it sort of 
can lose meaning to a point where like you don't think about the lyrics or you you know you don't think about it you know yeah what i'm saying like like i mean it's not my shit like it's not it's not even completely my shit but like look at i do like you out of now yeah look at um is it credence i tried to listen to ironic the other night yeah not unrelated i just i think i just saw the gif from the music video and i reminded Uh, the song and i looked it up on on spotify and i was like this is not my type of yeah, shit. I, I got like bored it. with this after five seconds. Of, I don't like Ironic. Ironic sounds bad. I'm maybe. not into that one. Uh, but it's kind of like Fortunate Son by, uh, I think it's Credence. Um, I think... Is that? Um, if it's not Credence, it's like the band, right? Credence, Clearwater, yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think the band did. Yeah, I don't think so either. But like, because Fortunate Son's about, you know... Uh, yeah, it's Credence. It's talking about Vietnam and, you know, the rich kids go to school and the poor kids go to fucking war. Um, And it's, you know, that's a bop nowadays, right? It's a classic rock jam, but it doesn't have that same effect, right? Or like, uh, what's that one that's like, stop to do what's that sound? Any music... That is, I'm sorry, I just read Gene Simmons criticized some Beatles album, and I'm like, you've never made any music making it, like, your opinion on the Beatles worth listening to. Yeah. No. None. No. Not, not a single song by Kiss like, is in any way better than the Beatles in any way. Like, Kiss is, like, it's all right music, but it's all about the show. Yeah. No, it was I'm, never about the music. Exactly. I've not fucking listened to them. I've never once clicked on a Kiss song on Spotify. Yeah, no, I don't know. I've never, never had once. any interest whatsoever. I, uh, yeah, I could go my whole life without ever hearing uh, Kiss again. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I also fuck James Simmons. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a creep. shit bag. Fuck Is him. he? Huh? What, what makes you say he's a creep? Just like in general. Yeah, he's just gross. Fuck him. Yeah, he's also like a major capitalist. Yeah. Um. I also like the Trump supporter or something. Oh really? Yeah. That's not surprising. Yeah. Good. Good. I think that's it. Go yeah, ahead. that's it. Um, so, I mean, oh, her name's Tracy. I called her, what, Carrie? Yeah. Damn, I feel bad. Sorry, Jezebel. Tracy Flick. Yeah. That's the character that, um, uh, what's her name? Not you very more. <clears throat> what is her name? Uh. <laughs> Legally Blonde? Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon played in, uh, Election. A movie we were talking about. Oh, I, weird callback. Weird callback. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. It's a, I think it's one of those things we have to look back this on. This the most BuzzFeed article of all time. This? No. Uh, this what? BuzzFeed article I saw. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 26 Sorry, the... times The Office was the funniest TV show of all time. Oh, fuck off. That is the most BuzzFeed shit. Yeah, that's like, 26 times something funny was funny. Michael Scott. <laughs> Said the Wayne Gretzky quote. <laughs> uh, Twenty six times BuzzFed laid off good employees. BuzzFeed. What did I say? BuzzFed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the BuzzFeds, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Mm, middle fingers. Mm, fuck. Fuck. Uh, buzz. Fickle. <laughs> buzz. <laughs> uh, buzz. Feed for the. Pop pigs. Um, More like Buzz Frugal, am I right? Most like Buzz Fruit. <laughs> More like Buzz Buzz Buzz. I'm a bee. Let me pollinate that that pill. What? That pill. That flower. <laughs> I saw a jagged little pill. The musical in the headlines. Uh, but yeah, um, I think this is one of those albums that had a major cultural impact, but like wasn't as great. It was. It's something to look back at, kind of with rose tinted glasses, but it's also it was profound in its time. And, and just to us, again to us and her. Yeah. It's not something we want to listen to, but it's yeah. it's still impactful. Yeah, for and sure. Profound to its audience. Yeah. And I think that it's a. And also another person in the comments, I, yeah. maybe on this version or on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, said that this is her cringing about her how. She, cringing about herself in middle school and saying that this reflects badly on the album. Like, cringing about her own angst in middle school Mm -hmm. and saying that 
and putting that on the album, projecting that onto the album. A little bit. A little bit with her voice and her power as senior staff writer at Jezebel. Yeah. They, that can happen. Yeah. You can't just cringe on something that you... It's like, ugh, I hate I can't believe you ever liked this when you go yeah. back to something that you liked as a teenager. When in reality, it's like, oh, I can't believe I was ever like this. Exactly. It's, but uh, it's one I of those... mean, here's the thing. Yeah, okay. Donald Glover doesn't even like camp that much. Really? <laughs> but I listen to camp a lot in middle school. I listened to camp a lot in high school, yeah. It was, it was my album. <clears throat> it was a big deal. Yeah. It's nerdy rap that isn't like Tech Nine Hobson bullshit. First off, stop insulting Tech Nine. Hobson sucks. Tech Nine is not automatically garbage. Okay. I also don't right. like the way you spoke about him when you sent when you thought he was dead and you told me that. You said your favorite rapper Tech Nine died. And I'm yeah. like <laughs> if he had died, then I'm actually sad. <laughs> Sorry. Because he is a good Rapper. Yeah, that's all I have. I don't care how corny you think he is. Te- the Tech Nine we're talking well, about isn't you, dead. Yeah. I didn't appreciate right. tweeting that to me. I'm a, okay. When Ween dies, when they get cru- <laughs> when their old asses get crushed at a concert by like a, a light giant falling boonish. on them or something, I'm gonna I'm a fucking oh uh, your fucking lame nerd <laughs> ba- funny band got fucking decapitated at their own concert, the fucking 50-something losers, that's how I'm gonna tweet it to you. Like, I don't even hate Ween, but don't, don't send that shit to me. Okay, sorry. Uh. And the one that did die was a battle rapper, he was a good battle rapper, and I was familiar with his work. So, oh, Tech 9 R.I.P., Tech 9 the battle rapper from Philadelphia. But not Tech 9 the- spelled in 9 in E. Yeah, that's so all. Tech the nine. fast middle, fast Midwest rapper. Is he from the Midwest? Okay, somewhere in the West. I kind of forgot. I associate yeah. him with like Detroit style hip hop. So, um, but I would say that this is like looking back and criticizing early stages of a philosophical ideology. This is like looking back at first wave femin. This is like looking back at first wave feminism and pointing out the racism. Yeah, it, it's like yeah, it was a big deal back then. I mean, that's a legit criticism, but this is <coughs> yeah, but know, it's also like a legit, as legit. As I, I, and I get that, um, but it's like it's one of what I'm trying to say is it's a situation where it's like this is a look back in time when, when, to when, a when people criticize the racism in first wave feminism, that's a legit criticism, and they're yes. not rejecting first wave feminism completely. They're yeah. just saying. That I can't apply that type of exactly feminism to my feminism yeah. because it's not inclusive, it's not intersectional at all. Yeah, it's completely focused upon white women and their concerns. Yeah, and, and oh, oh, you're wanting to make my like what yeah. I had said. Like you're trying to point out the bigger flaw. Yeah. And okay, I guess you understand. Um, but it's an it's sort of a situation but where I still respect it. Yeah. yeah, it's like. You're looking back at, like we said, hip hop. Like, but she's saying that completely Jack a Little Pill is uh, not as good as you remember it is, and you only like it because of nostalgia. But it's not entirely no, true. No, it's it was important in its day. Yeah, and it, it's one of those things where and it, it still it, sounds good to certain people to this yeah, day, and it's still profound yeah. to certain people. It, it just happens that you know. Th- the it was made same, for its time, but yeah. The same. What is it made for its own time? Yeah, Greta Van Fleet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. I'm glad you laughed at that and didn't give me shit. I'm trying to defend that fucking rip off of a rip off band. Uh, I don't give a shit. I'm still gonna listen to their music. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie that they are rip off, but I don't give a yeah. shit. Uh, but so, like we said, it's like looking back at like Sugar Hill Gang or you know, some fucking lame 90s or lame 80s rap. Like, it's... It was important and groundbreaking in its day, but yeah. shit's progressed. That doesn't mean this is bad. And I think one of the greatest things about this is that this can appeal to younger and younger audiences, yeah. creating this, uh, this like, thought process that leads up to where we are today and educates kids about feminism and uh, women's rights earlier and earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like how long are we in? How long in the tooth is this episode? In the what? In the tooth is this episode. 
I, I mean, which means old. Long in the tooth means old. I mean, how long have we been going? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just never heard of that. Uh, 129. All right. I got one more topic I want to talk about before we end it. Okay. It's, um, it's an article uh, called... Before we hang ourselves in this room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, some... Oh, man. We should probably talk about the mobile report thing as well. Yeah. Probably both. Okay. I'll do this one first. This okay. is pop culture, and then we'll get to the mobile thing at the very end. Yeah, because, like, you know... Yeah. Politics or second yeah. hat on this pod. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, neither of us are smart enough to cover that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't read shit, so. Yeah. I've read more, and even, I don't know if I can completely articulate <laughs> what's going on here. Um, these, this article from IndieWire mm-hmm. uh, says From us to hereditary, should we be using the term elevated horror? Here's what 17 film critics think. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What's elevate, elevated what? Horror. Horror? Yeah. Okay. What Scary is, movies. What does that mean? Uh, good, uh, smart horror movies. It's like, it's post-comedy. It's uh, like post-comedy for a genre that film critics some respect. Oh. It's like, the same shit. Oh. I've read, the, I've seen this twice and I agreed immediately. Elevated horror. Yeah. This is immediately how I felt as soon as I saw it. Yeah. Was these film critics trying to come up with a new term because they don't respect traditional horror. Yeah. So they filled the need which is something that not even the creators of those movies would like. They won't appreciate that. Appreciate what? Them trying to come up with a different term other than horror movie for their horror movies. Yeah. Jordan Peele has been abundantly clear about being a horror movie nerd. He's mm-hmm. made no shame about having yeah. no shame about being a horror movie nerd. He doesn't want. He's actually tweeted as is a horror movie. Don't try to give it a special form oh, of horror. Yeah. To make it a high culture horror, like how you don't respect horror, like how it was nominated for a comedy. Yeah, well, they did that because he's a comedian, yeah, and it was, and, it, and the movie was slightly comedic. Yeah, but still, that's not. Yeah, that was that's disrespectful in a different way. Yeah, this, but okay. And, uh, but like, or Hereditary, which is a movie that came out last year. It's a very good horror movie. Mm-hmm. Very scary, very unsettling, very very intense the entire way through. I don't know if you would like it. You don't like watching horror movies, do you? Not jump scary. I like I can do gore and I can do psychological thrillers and like thrillers, but I can't do like jump scare sort of shit. Like, it's like they're just um you know, it's not like it's not focused on jump scares at all. There's shit that happens abruptly. Yeah. Like, there's a very traumatic event that happens abruptly. It's probably the scariest moment of the film. The ending's intense as shit, but, like, this middle section is probably the most fucked up thing that happens in the film. Shit. I'll tell you off, Mike. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. oh, now you respect spoiler culture. Okay. Wait, it's a, it's a good movie. I want people to see it. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Hereditary. Glad you changed it. your opinion. I'm not changing my opinion in general. Just in this movie. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, Hereditary is a... It's a very good movie. But it's, it is a movie that is like supernatural horror mm. that wants you to watch it. I mean, that, that makes no bones of being horror. Yeah. You don't, they don't need you to call it elevated horror. Because uh, or- film critics think of horror as like slasher movies. Yeah. They think of it all as the same 80s slasher movie shit. Yeah. They don't respect it as a genre. No. Well, uh, so... Ignoring there's like 500, like, subcategories in horror. And, like, so many horror movies have such beautiful subtext. Hereditary has a message as well. Really? And it is a... It's about, like, family trauma and stuff like that. Okay. And it's a... It's a. It fits into a distinct. It clearly fits into a distinct horror genre. Mm-hmm. Supernatural horror. Yeah. It's not slasher, but slasher is a genre. So is supernatural horror. Found footage is a is a subgenre. There's yeah. a lot of different horror movies. Oh, for sure. Uh, Science as, fiction horror, uh, like camp horror. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm making that what, one up. What is Get Out? Camp horror is anything. It's just a, a common setting. Yeah. No. Oh. Oh. I meant like campy horror. But like camp horror. No, I get that. But campy horror. Campy horror. Probably you not mean a horror great. comedy. Yeah, but also probably not a subgenre because no. like there's a lot of horror that is campy. Unintentionally. And, yeah, and there's a lot of 
intentionally campy horror that would be more so or this a slasher comedy. or like yeah uh, or like kind of exploitative horror like where it's just like full on just like what's the most gross shit we could do here yeah um uh, like scream that's Maybe. not it's not exploitive oh, okay. that's meta it's oh like, really it's yeah. a horror comedy meta oh, me- okay. meta comedy gotcha. I mean meta uh, horror Dude, I, I should never speak about Scream because I always think Slasher. Of, <laughs> I always think of uh, I get Scream and Scary Movie one and two confused. So, but uh, Scary Movie one, Scary Movie two is uh, is a house on haunted hill. Oh yeah, mixed with uh, Poltergeist parody. But there's still they still call same characters. Yeah. Well, they bring Ghostface. Is or whatever the fuck. I don't think he's in that one. Well, maybe it's the what's up joke is still in it. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, but, like, the, this person made the argument, elevated horror is conscious rap music is post-comedy terms used by culture critics who review art forms they disdain and consider their inherently lowbrow. Yeah. It's pretty, it's true. Well, when, it, when they say elevated horror, that makes me think that it has, like, some sort of subtext in it. But, but it plenty doesn't seem of horror to be the does. Case. Yeah, even doesn't. the lowest of low horrors oftentimes does have yeah. subtext. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's it's just critics who don't respect horror. And the same probably goes with sci-fi. Um, I was watching a video about uh, Twilight Zone. It was explaining the story of Twilight Zone and how uh, you know he used the science fiction shit to make these big political points. Yeah. And what's I don't remember his name, but. Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. No, but wait. Twilight Zone, you said? Yeah. Uh, Rod Serling. Yeah, Sterling. Serling. Serling? Yeah. Uh, like like a steak? Uh, sorry, joking. Uh, but yeah, like, it's... Uh, because it's easy to look at Twilight Zone as a little, like, silly until you, like, think about it a little bit. You know, that's also, that also counts into the horror genre as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm using that. I just wanted to yeah. bring that up, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but, like, it, it's very belittling, because horror, shit's scary in life. They don't respect genres. Critics, these culture critics, film critics, critics who review comedy, I don't know. They don't respect them. They don't respect them as genres. So they need terms, that's why they come up with post-comedy yeah. or elevated horror, because they don't respect these genres. They consider them inherently lowbrow. Were they saying conscious rap? Yeah. As a thing? I don't Was think that... conscious rap... That seemed because that was like a self referential thing. I don't know. Like don't conscious know rappers called it conscious rap. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't think that's the same. Yeah, that's my that's one. Po- that's my one problem because yeah. conscious hip hop is a distinct subgenre of hip yeah. hip hop. I don't know if that's just like disrespecting hip hop. Like because there is hip hop that it that just really <clears> does not even try to think. That's yeah, why there is yeah. conscious hip hop. But also like conscious rap, like also. The term conscious rap is kind of pretentious in its own right. Yeah. Like, if you call yourself a conscious rapper, it's like calling everyone else unconscious. Like, it's yeah. like calling Kendrick not a conscious rapper because he doesn't claim he con- conscious rap. Con- he's He actually has oh, really? claimed it oh, okay. on a song. You never heard of his, his remix of Mask Off? No, actually, like, no. How you gonna let conscious... Conscious go commercial or something okay, like that. Yeah, like yeah, he he does claim conscious rap. Right? Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, but it's still like kind of like a eh, yeah. But also, maybe the situation's different. There's a lot of hype rap. Yeah. There's trap. I don't think conscious is that disrespectful. It depends on how you're using it. Yeah. Okay. Like it'd be like. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't have anything on that. But yeah, the Mueller report. The one more thing. Oh, uh, okay. Conscious and the terms highbrow and lowbrow come from phrenology in the first place. Oh, yeah. Shit. I never thought about that. I never thought about that, dude. Apparently, Shit. I have low brows. <laughs> Can you have high? Damn. Damn. I never thought about that. Shit. Also, intelligent dance music. Intelligent dance music? Talking about the term IDM. That's huh? internet dance music. No, that's intelligent. No, it's it means it means intelligent dance no, music. No, it means internet. It means intelligent. Dog, no. I'm Look 100%. it up. IDM means intelligent dance music. Oh, damn it! 
Why do you on. think it meant internet? Where'd you hear that? <laughs> I, dude, isn't there internet dance music? Probably. A lot of dance music on the internet. <laughs> Huh. Shit. I've been I've gone years thinking that, man. Years. Can we talk about why it's called uh intelligent dance music real quick? Uh originating in the nineteen ninety early nineties, uh regarded as cerebral and better suited to home listening than dancing. Oh, okay, I get that. It's just not it's not it's dance it's dance music that you're not even meant to really dance, dance to. to. It's, just it's kinda like, dang. He did that, or yeah. she did that, is what you're supposed to go. You're yeah, to it's kind of like, wow, what an artist. And it's <laughs> a little bit like ambient and yeah. has like that sort of tripness to it, which is also why I like this type of shit. I'm into internet dance music. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I totally just did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> All right. Shit. Let's talk about the. Uh... Let's talk about Drumpf and uh, the Cheeto Man and uh, how Muller <laughs> is going to be is our Gary lord and Poon? savior. Uh, Muller finally sent in a report about whether or not there was collusion, and it says there isn't much collusion. With Russia. Yeah. That's all we know. It does cool. say that there, the, it does not say the president has not committed a bunch of criminal shit. Yeah. We haven't got the full report either. Yeah. It has not been released to the public uh, completely. Uh, but... That's all we know is the yeah. Russia didn't really have much to do with it. Yeah. But it turns out Trump was not gay with Putin. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, maybe it was the Slavs. Could, it's the Germans. Hey, yeah. That, would, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, you, did, you saw the video where uh, Trump's wig fell off, right? I don't care about this shit. Uh, okay. I just I, I just wanted to know if he saw it. I, I thought it was interesting. Just one of those things I'm curious about is what he looks like without it, you know? So yeah. it's interesting. And like it's also kinda cool to see something embarrassing happen to him, you know. It's kinda it's like a nice little it's yeah, a it's little, hard. little, 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 little it, win. Yeah, you know? but it's like it's hard to embarrass Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, you gotta That man really has no shame. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, does the man have no shame, or is he just like out of it? I don't think I don't think he has shame. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's a malignant narcissist. Yeah. I don't think. He has We're talking shame. about a man who was again. This is armchair diagnosing, but I don't really think he has any shame. Multi-billion dollar man. Air. Air. Yeah. Air. Uh, that was in a McDonald's commercial. Yeah. Yeah. So the heir to a his father was rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Loan of a million dollars. Which, who was probably also an heir. Which, it, the when the, the report came out and it turns out there wasn't any, Yeah. a lot of people on the left who were already saying that there was nothing, nothing was going to come out of the Russian investigation Yeah. were gloating. Which I'm saying, you can gloat a little bit, but yeah. don't gloat super hard. Because unless you break, you got to remember while gloating yeah. that are we defending Donald Trump? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's like, if you're gloating about Russia not having anything to do with the election, you're kind of being proud of the fact that America voted this man in. They're not really. No. I mean, it's like, like, just don't gloat too much about forgetting that he is a piece of shit. Yeah. Because it sounds like you're defending him. And you gloat too much about the fact that he didn't really commit. Like, like the people, the same people on the left who who will, like, say that nothing came of it. Mm -hmm. Unless they bring up how much of a piece of shit Trump is, it does sound like you're just like, you care mo- way too much about owning the libs than yeah. how stupid America was for voting this piece of shit in. <laughs> um, man. They're not proud that America was dumb enough to vote this man in. They, they're just aware. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is that like, say, like, gloating about it is on the same level as being proud that America voted him in. It's like... It's not really. Yeah, but it's like the same thought process almost to me. Not, uh, the logic lines up for me. I'm at a loss for words for it, but yeah. <laughs> Damn, they close. Uh, well, I guess that's all I have to say on that. All right, this has been uh, 2004 podcast Odyssey. And this, 
I'm I, yeah. <laughs> I've been Javon Gordon. I'm 22 now. Oh I'm yeah, you're you. 22. I'm not 22. I don't anymore. know about you. Like uh, me? Yeah. I feel like Taylor Swift. She's like 26. Uh, a couple years ago. <laughs> you mean four years ago? Huh? You mean four years ago? Yeah, whatever. That song came out like the year after I graduated high school. Yeah. <clears throat> You're proud of that one, aren't you? Say your name. Oh, yeah, no. Yo, we never even said our names at the beginning, did we? I'm Jaron Gordon. I'm Bobby DeVore. This, this has been, been 2000. You go. Uh, oh, oh, we're doing that? Yeah. Oh, God damn it. And? Four. A. Podcast Odyssey. Oh, great. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.